Why did an Armenian from the United States decide to open an open-air museum in the center of Yerevan, and what sculpture had a wider public resonance? Here outside and inside of the cascade, you can see the sculptures of world authors such as Fernando Botero, Harry Flanagan, and Jaume Plenz. Jean Plenza. What is the main secret of preparing an Armenian lavash, and what ingredients can be wrapped up in it? I have been baking our traditional bread for more than 20 years. Everyone can learn how to make it. The main thing is to get the hang of it. How old are the unique churches in Armenia, and how did the masters of the past carve entire churches in the rocks? A small hole year tick from which the construction of Gekhard began. This is an ancient Armenian monastery complex, almost completely carved into basalt rock. Why do philologists of the two countries write one anthology? Centuries-old cultural, economic and language contacts between Armenians and Kazakhs, between Armenia and Deshte Kipchak, are the subject of many studies. An Orvernissage of Vernissage, the most unusual flea market in the world, a where to buy exclusive Armenian souvenirs. Our journey across sunny Armenia continues. In today's visa-free program, you will know a lot of facts about this country that you never knew before. Get ready to be surprised. At the crossroads of the world, one of the most Asian countries, Armenia, was born. The name of the state was mentioned in the works of Asian historians and geographers. And the main city, Yerevan, is older than even Rome itself. The exact date of foundation of the capital of Armenia is 782 BC. This is evidenced by the stone inscription found on the territory of the Yerbuni fortress. It is considered the passport of modern Yerevan. Yerevan has come to be known as Armenia's pink city for its beautiful reddish stone buildings. They are constructed out of pink stones from surrounding landscape. The stones have more than 40 colors, but the most common is grayish pink. Therefore, the color is brightest at sunrise. Also, there are a lot of monuments in Yerevan, and all of them face the symbol of Armenia, Mount Ararat. Mother Armenia is the highest monument in the country. The height of the sculpture, along with its pedestal, is 54 meters. It is established in 1967 and it is a symbol of a victory of the World War II. Mother Armenia is not a warrior, but a guardian. The shield is at her feet and the sword is in the sheath. She does not attack, but only protects her country. Strategic position of the Armenian highlands for many centuries determined the fate of the country, which became the battleground for many conquerors. Persians, Romans, Arabs, warriors of Byzantium and Ottoman Empire fought for these lands. In later history of the Armenian people, there were also a few tragic pages. The worst events of the 20th century are the genocide, the Spidek earthquake and the nagorno karabakh conflict. Armenia is a peaceful country that warmly welcomes its guests. Now it changes its appearance and completely different expositions are being installed in the streets of Yerevan. Cascade is one of the top destinations in the capital of Armenia. The unique monumental architectural composition located in the center of Yerevan features staircases, sculptures, fountains and flower beds. The construction of the Cascade started during the Soviet era, in the 70s, and was completed only in the early 2000s, when an American businessman from the United States, Gerard Kafesijan, came to Armenia. He finished the construction of the facility and gave the city a huge number of sculptures. Here, both inside and outside of the Cascade, you can see a large number of works by world authors such as Fernando Botero, Harry Flanagan, and Jaume Plenz. In other countries, you need to buy a ticket to get to the museum. Enjoy the art. We have here an open-air museum.
You can visit the Café Sijan Center of the Arts for free. This place is visited by more than 1 million people a year. The most bizarre and unusual figures were collected from around the world. Here you can see a fierce line made of automobile tires, figures of people made from letters, bronze karate hairs. However, the most controversial exposition is a lady smoking a cigarette. Huge naked bronze woman with a cigarette stood on one of the squares of Copenhagen. Before then, it was moved to Yerevan. And for a long time, they tried to remove it, considering it a bad example for others. But the sculpture stays to this day. Interestingly, ethnic Armenian Gerard Kafisijan presented this museum to the city, although he lived in America. Thus showed his love and respect for his native land. This is an example of the active role the diaspora plays in the life of Armenia. Diasporas are Armenians who live outside of Armenia. But nevertheless, they keep the memory of their ancestors and make a huge contribution to the development of present-day Armenia, to the development of its culture and education. And there are many such examples. For example, the longest cable car, it is here in the south of the country, in Tatev. It was also built with the money of a Russian businessman of Armenian descent, Robin Vardanyan. The famous school of UWC school was also built with the funding of Robin Vardanyan. This is an example of how the Armenian diaspora works and how every Armenian living outside Armenia tries to contribute to the development of the motherland. According to official data, slightly more than 3 million people live in Armenia itself, and there are much more Armenians abroad, about 11 people. And it was non-indigenous Armenians who by fate were scattered around the world and became the first tourists to visit Armenia. Foreigners followed them, but the citizens of our country are only discovering the tourist destinations for themselves. Armenia is not only considering our tourists, our tourists visit Armenia very seldom because it seems to our tourists that we all know about these countries that were part of the Soviet Union and we have a lot of Armenians here. But in fact, there are many things that are worth seeing in gastronomic tours. There are also tours that show the culture of this nation. Armenia was the first country in the world to adopt Christianity as a state religion. This land has more than 4,000 architectural monuments of antiquity, such as temples and monasteries, fortresses and mountain castles. Here you can meet the ancient relic when Mirta, the god of the sun, was worshipped. Garni is the only standing pagan temple on the territory of Armenia and the entire post-Soviet space. It was built in the first century and surprisingly with the arrival of Christianity on this land, the temple was not destroyed. However, in the 17th century, a powerful earthquake happened, which turned this citadel into ruins. And only in the Soviet years it was restored and turned into a museum. Today, Garni is a unique historical place that is included in the UNESCO World Heritage List. The facade of the temple is decorated with 24 slender ionic columns which are topped with a roof with a triangular pediment. Each column is a kind of time indicator in the 24-hour zone. After the earthquake, the wreckage of the temple was scattered throughout the district. They were collected over the years by local residents. At the beginning of the 20th century, the building was rebuilt using its original stones and missing pieces were filled with blank stones. That's why the walls of the citadel are so different. Literally half an hour from Temple of Garni, there is another magnificent place, Monastery of Gekhart, which includes tombs, monastic cells, and temples with caves. All this is located on the slope of cliffs surrounded by picturesque nature. But visitors are more impressed not by the beauty of this cross-domed church, but by how it was built. The small hole, Yertik, from which the construction of Gekhart began, is an ancient Armenian monastery complex, completely carved into basalt rock. It was from this upper hole that the masters began carving stone and a special Armenian ornament that decorated almost every centimeter of the walls of this church. 
There is no magnificent decoration and multicolored interior inside the temple. This is a modest, quiet place, and only stone walls keep a long history. Each stone is like a work of art, and you just wonder how the stone cutters of the past created hachkars with the help of the simplest tools. These are cross stones with beautiful patterns, a kind of symbol of Armenia, which cannot be found in any other country. Armenia is not only a country of temples, but also a country of mountains. The most popular ski resort is Zahadzor. It is located in a snowy valley at the foot of Taginis and attracts the increasing attention of skiers and snowboarders from all over the world. Both Olympic athletes and beginners who have just recently started skiing can train here. This resort can compete with many European resorts. The skiing area starts from 1,600 meters to 2,800 meters. We have five lifts, a ropeway. There are black, red, and blue tracks. Also, both experienced athletes and beginners can train at our resort. We have trainers who will teach and show everything that one needs. Tourism in Armenia is in the development phase. Every year, a growing number of guests come here for vivid emotions. These are mainly residents of the CIS countries. Recently, orders have been received for tours from Kazakhstan. Hello, good morning. Where are you from? Travel companies in Armenia offer a full package of services, individual and group excursions, tours, hotel reservations, transfers, and there is a Wi-Fi in cars all the time so that tourists are always in touch with their relatives. The main customers are Russians, but now tour operators have begun to establish contacts with other CAS countries. Basically, as a host, I can say that these are CIS countries, Belarus, Kazakhstan, Russia, but there are also European and Asian countries. For example, Germany, France, China. The number of tourists has increased recently. We have a large flow of tourists, but also there were guests from Kazakhstan. And I would like to have even more guests from sunny Kazakhstan, since Armenia is rich not only in nature and architectural monuments, but also rich in its culture, which may also interest tourists of any age. Meanwhile, travel companies in Kazakhstan want to work not only in the direction of Astana, Yerevan, but also in the opposite route, so that Armenians come to our country, especially since now there are open customs borders between our countries. In addition, the Kazakh lands are also rich in sightseeing, of which few people know. Возможности нашего Казахстана необычайны. То есть здесь есть и западный Казахстан, здесь есть и восточный Казахстан. The possibilities of our Kazakhstan are extraordinary. There is both West Kazakhstan and East Kazakhstan. There is Almaty with its parts and with its beautiful views, plus Northern Kazakhstan. We have a lot to show. My dream is to actually bring tourists to Kazakhstan. We are already working on this project, on this direction. For the time being, only labor migrants and scientists come from Armenia to Kazakhstan. Together with our professors, they are working on the creation of common scientific works. Namely, they compose the new anthology of Kazakh literature in the Armenian language and study rich Kipchak written heritage. Now there is a dispute among Kazakh linguists. Some believe that the work of great Abaya Kunanbaev lies at the heart of the modern literary Kazakh language. Some believe that the formation of this language comes from the time of the works of Akins and Jirao of the Kazakhanate. But of course, the Kazakh Kipchak language is much more than centuries. The centuries old Armenian cuisine is also the most unusual in its taste and the most indescribable in its color. And the number one dish we rightly recognized is lavash bread, thin as parchment paper. It can be stored for months and it will not lose its taste. To see with our own eyes how the lavash is prepared, we went to the village of bakers. Итак, друзья, сейчас я не журналист, а хатстук. Это человек, который печет хлеб. И Люсине сейчас нам поможет э, и расскажет, как с помощью такой скалки раскатывать лаваш. So, friends, I am not a journalist now, but a 
Hatskuk, which means a person who bakes bread. And Lucine will now help and tell us how to roll lavash and pita bread with the help of such a rolling pin. The secret of cooking is very simple. For the dough, you need only three ingredients, water, flour, and salt. Such a soft dough is knitted, and we roll it out like this. The most difficult thing is not to roll out the dough, but to stretch it with our hands. For this, you need to make several virtuoso movements. Now I will try it too, but I don't know if I can do it or not. Lucine is doing great because she has been baking pita bread for more than 20 years. She is a professional huts cook. So will it be sufficient? Now, what are we doing? Roll it once more. You need to roll out the dough approximately of this size. Show, please. So that's it, huh? Well, you know, I'm not so good at it. All the time, I'm afraid that the dough will make a hole. And how long should it be done? Is it enough? I think my first lavash is not so bad. Rolled out and stretched, dough should be laid out on a rag bag and be sure to make cuts with a knife and spray it with water. Only after this lavash is sent into the oven. Thus the dough is attached to the walls of the tandoor oven and literally in a couple of minutes we will have hot, freshly baked, appetizing Armenian lavash. My grandmother taught me how to bake bread. She had the best pita bread in the whole district. We have kept these old recipes and used the same stove as in previous times. Now everything is switching to new technologies, baking too, but I believe that Armenian bread should remain in its original form. And you need to savor pita bread with filling, and goat cheese and mountain greens are best suited for this. Having tasted such a shepherd delicacy, we set a course for one more side of Yerevan, the souvenir market with the beautiful name Vernissage. This is an ideal place for lovers of art and handmade products. A whole block in the center of the city, six long rows, several hundred counters selling amazing products, proving the fact that Armenians are people with skilled hands. Here you can buy not only souvenirs but also real masterpieces made by craftsmen. The famous Armenian carpets, household utensils, so beautiful. These are products made of wool, wood, leather, and of course, jewelry. Earrings, pendants, and rings of silver, gold, and even wood. In general, wood in the hands of Armenians is like an obedient clay. Armenian masters make absolutely everything from wood, from gift chests and baggamon, to vases, watches, original figurines, and musical instruments. He's not just a street musician and a master, he's a professional flutist of one of the state orchestras of Armenia. In his spare time, he sells a handmade duduk in the market. The duduk is our ancient national wind instrument, which has a unique sound. You can play melodies with various tones on this instrument. Duduk consists of a tube and a removable double reed. The length of the tube can be up to 40 centimeters, but the main thing here is not the size of the tool, but the material. It is important what tree duduk is made of. Its sound depends on it. Armenia is called an unknown paradise, and this is true. It is sacred and majestic, like the legendary mountain Ararat. It is whimsical and memorable, like this ancient, colorful Armenian courtyards. It is soulful and warming like the famous Armenian cognac. Therefore, if you are a good traveler, then you will definitely visit the beautiful land, especially since there is a visa-free regime between our countries.